In the context of rapid urbanization and climate change, an increasing number of cities are designed to be energy conscious and future-proofed, creating optimal environments for citizens. But how truly do they represent the future? Can cities set the agenda for society's response to climate change? In this report, the Economist Intelligence Unit investigates how Europe can create tomorrow's sustainable cities. In 2008, the average American was responsible for 18 metric tons of carbon dioxide per person, while the average Chinese clocked in at only 5.3 tons. As high urbanization rates in developing countries contribute to increasing carbon emissions, cities will have a crucial role to play in combating climate change. We're about 7 billion people on the planet and we don't even supply all of that 7 billion people with electricity. In fact, there's about 2 billion people that don't have access to electricity at the moment. So we're also moving to a future where there'll be 10 billion people by 2050 or so on. So we have a large number of people that we need to supply energy and electricity to. And this is going to be a huge challenge. Ultimately, we think um, the battle for our climate and, and for the environment will be won and lost in our cities as we urbanise as a species. Urbanisation is a very interesting process. There are many challenges now, people moving into the cities, but there are also opportunities. Uh, we can see innovations, social innovations, technical innovations. There are the new cities which we will tend to see more in the developing world. Then we have the massive challenge of urban regeneration. In large parts of, of our historic cities have either gone through an economic shift where it had a large piece of manufacturing and now those areas are derelict or large areas that were ports that now have no ships. And we've got other areas where, quite frankly, urban planning and architecture just ran amok and they've turned into sort of social deserts. In 2009, the European Green City Index measured and rated the environmental performance of 30 leading cities from 30 European countries. Copenhagen stood out as the greenest major city in Europe, followed by Stockholm and Oslo. How can European cities learn from these green leaders to become more sustainable? It's in cities where you, you can use energy more intelligently and more efficiently for everyone, both at work and at home. Today we tend to produce everything very centralised in large plants, and yet the opportunity to bring very small, very robust, very discreet new energy production technologies into the heart of the city is actually fairly straightforward. And I think identifying those opportunities is really where some of the existing cities have, have, have fantastic chance to make a substantive change. For me, the first technology or technologies is actually to become super energy efficient. I mean, we need to get serious about energy efficiency and energy savings. And we can, we can save energy everywhere, from buildings to cars to industry. There's opportunities everywhere to be saving energy. I think what you could do is deliver technologies that are compelling, that people don't have to change their behaviours that much. The things around them should respond to create the efficiency for them, so they don't even have to think about it. And where you can find that, then I think we create success. Living Planet is a technology company that develops urban operating systems which harness and create efficiency in cities. It tests urban technologies and new ways that people can interact in urban spaces in a development in Portugal called Planet Valley. Our job is to make the house cheaper to build so that that just comes part of the function of the house. It's in the DNA of the building. There may be further breakthroughs in technology in 20 or 30 years, but for the moment we're reliant on battery technology and pump storage and in the larger scale hydro. It's not so much technologies, but it's more about the market and that the market has the right signals and that the actors in the market uh, are basically getting signals that are saying, right, if you save energy, you can make money. And that's really what has to happen. So on the one hand, we need to be super energy efficient. And on the other hand, we need to see a dramatic shift from uh, fossil fuels, and particularly coal, to renewable energy. The fact that there is a diversity of supply uh, of different technologies also helps to provide system stability and, uh, and that um, security of supply which we want. I think what is maybe most important is that we do understand that we have one common goal. 
to reach a more sustainable development and that we have commun to communicate, uh, to cooperate and in that way we can become committed to, to reach this goal. Uh, I think it's important um, that governments do see this. Uh, they can make a difference. Uh, Actually, they play a very important role uh, in, in developing policy and in, in, in developing tools that can help us to change society today. Without smart legislation that's enacted quickly, you don't change the behaviours of the financial market and the guys who build it. So smart legislation that continually evolves with new technology, really critical. The balance, I mean there's this question of, of a balance between government and market is also a little bit misleading because we obviously need both. But what we really need government policies to do is to harness the, the market and to harness innovation and creativity and to send signals to the market which says we need to move towards a low carbon economy and fast. And so what we have to do as technologists and innovators and entrepreneurs is figure out ways to bring capability to enhance people's lives, to give them that moment of awe, like when they first you know, turn on their iPhone. Um, the city needs to provide that same form of compelling nurturing of its population. Now we've just launched a, a new initiative called Smart Cities and Communities. We thought this would be relatively interesting to people, modest uh, initiative. In fact, uh, over 800 cities in Europe have set, signed up to it. And uh, whether it's in Portugal in, uh, or in Ireland in Dundalk or in, here in Brussels, uh, there is a vast amount of initiative going on to try and uh, create a vision of the city which uh, makes sense for everyone. And um, you know, the, the less waste in particular in the use of energy, the better it is for everyone and, and hopefully the more comfortable it is.